Hello, and welcome to Fun Stuff on the International Space Station. And I decided to do this talk. I was spending some time doing some space station research, and I ended up looking at the Google Earth Viewer, which lets you kind of uh, go around inside the space station and look at a bunch of different things. And while I was doing that, I came across uh, a bunch of things I found kind of interesting. And I thought, since I found them interesting, maybe some other people might find them interesting. So this isn't a full uh, tour of the space station. I'm not trying to be complete. Um, it's just some specific things that I thought might be fun to look at. So we're going to start uh, looking at one of the Cygnus cargo vessels. And this one caught my eye because of this rolled up uh, poster that's kind of, you know, bungeed to the back there. And I did a little searching, and, and here's the original view of this poster. And basically, uh, the Cygnus group decided they were going to name this after uh, John Glenn, obviously the astronaut, the first astronaut to orbit, first U.S. astronaut to orbit. So they called it the SS John Glenn, and they made this nice poster. And presumably this poster was held in this position inside the module, when it arrived at ISS and was attached to the station or berthed to the station. And then after they've unpacked a bunch of stuff, they don't want to throw this away. So now it's rolled up and put behind bungee cords uh, inside the station, inside the module here. And I thought it was interesting. They happened to roll it up just so you could still see John Glenn's head uh, very nicely. So there's someone kind of looking over you when you go into this module. Uh, the next one is the beam module. This is a Bigelow Aerospace uh, inflatable module. So if you look at, look at it, the part of the module that's uh, a long ways away and looks made out of metal, when it was orbited, that was all the way uh, close to us. So everything was compressed. And then on orbit, uh, these cylinders, which I presume were filled just with air, compressed air, those were released, and that caused the module to expand to its full length. And here's an interesting little side view. So that kind of shows you how much space they got, and that also shows you the texture of the walls. And this is a, an interesting way to build modules. Um, it's not clear to me how useful it's going to be, except for just adding additional space. And storage space is very useful, but uh, you don't have anything else in here. There's no other equipment or anything. Although maybe you could put a little bit more in it. So that's the beam. This is the US Columbus Lab. And I put this here mostly as a demonstration that this is an actually an actual uh, functional laboratory. So the vision in like movies and stuff is that laboratories are very neat and clean and everything's nice and beautiful. Um, and that's not true in reality at all. Real working laboratories tend to be uh, kind of messy and everything looks kind of kludged together. So this is a very good indication that this is actually a working laboratory. Um, things are very complicated and it's more than a little messy. Uh, the other thing that's interesting is we see, I count six different laptops here and laptops are the computer of choice for station. And we will see them all over the place. So this is, I think it's POISC. Uh, MRM means multi-resource module, so it means it can do both uh, a bunch of different things. Um, this is one of the Russian modules. It's used for storage. It's used, uh, you can connect another vehicle to it, so it's you can dock to it. And it also has a airlock, so you can do EVAs outside of station using this. And that's why there are two uh, Russian space suits here. Now, the real reason I wanted to show this is the Russian spacesuit is really this very interesting design. So this is called the Orlin spacesuit. And 
what they decided to do is uh, they decided that the way you would get into it is through the back. So the whole backpack hinges open and to get into it is actually a pretty quick operation. You kind of just get your legs going in down, get your arms uh, going in the sleeves and then just slide in. And then the back of the backpack just closes up and there you are, you're inside the spacesuit. So that's a pretty neat design and it's a nice and robust design. Uh, interestingly, the, the next one that I've got is the Quest airlock. So this is where U.S. astronauts, in, at least astronauts in U.S. suits, uh, would get ready and do all their operations to do EVAs. And you can see this is more of the normal U.S. style pressure suit, or it's also, also called the uh, extra vehicular, vehicular mobility unit or EMU. And for these, uh, the legs come off and you kind of put the legs on like a pair of pants and then you have to swim up into that torso part, get your arms through the sleeves and then the rest of the sleeves come on and then gloves go on. So it's a considerably longer operation than the Russian suit. And of course, uh, notice mission patches all over the place. Uh, something else I found interesting in the Quest airlock. So this is uh, kind of the some of the equipment used to connect to the suits. And I was I found it kind of interesting that this supports both kinds of spacesuits. If we look here in the upper right, we see there's a light that says EMU and a light that says Orland. So you can connect either of the suit types to this uh, hardware. And you also have probably noticed, if you look closely, maybe you can't see it down here, we have a bunch of, uh, uh, bunch of text in Cyrillic. So uh, if you're Russian, you would be able to read this. I obviously cannot read this. So I thought that was interesting. I actually did not expect this part to be uh, to support both suits. And I don't actually know whether the Russian uh, segment supports both suits. It may indeed. Um, another thing on the Quest Airlock, this is mostly here just to show a lot more mission patches. Tranquility, so one of the US modules. And uh, on the left, we see we have this wall here. We have toothpaste, apparently Colgate is the choice. And then down here, we have a crescent moon. And in the US, the crescent moon is used on certain kinds of buildings. And you may have guessed that this is actually the toilet cubicle. And that is the original one that flew with ISS. Um, they've since replaced it. NASA developed a new toilet and they've replaced it with a two stall version, which means I think that makes the uh, tranquility label for this module a little strange. Um, it gets a little bit weirder than that. Uh, here we have this uh, little collection of tools. So we'll see this often in station, uh, rather than carrying tools all over the place, they'll do this little conglomeration of the things you need to perform a specific task and it just kind of hangs out there. So back to my point on tranquility, uh, off on one side of the module, we have this and this is a uh, weightlifting machine or a resistance machine. Obviously there's no weight in weightlessness. Uh, this, the astronauts use this to keep in shape. So I think that's uh, one reason this isn't a very tranquil module. And if we go down to the other end, this is the treadmill from ISS, which also would not make this a very tranquil module. And the green parts are the treadmill part that will spin around as you run on it. And these two parts here are bungee cords that you attach to a harness and that holds you onto the treadmill when you're exercising. And you can tell that this is the treadmill room because up here we have uh, the running shoes of the crew. 
and then below the shoes are the harnesses that you put on uh, that those bungees attach to, to hold you down. Um, another interesting thing here, you notice we have this roll of tape that's just kind of stuck to stuck to something, and that is the uh, pretty much seems to be the universal way to store tape on ISS. Um, you take a little bit off and you just stick it to some convenient surface. So next up is the cupola, and this is a just a beautiful viewing uh, viewing opportunity. So this faces Earth, and you can see Earth. Uh, whatever the station is over right away. I thought it was really interesting. Um, here we have a docked craft that you can see. Um, obviously it's a Russian craft and this could be where it's docked. It could either be a Soyuz or a Progress. Uh, Soyuz is for people, Progress is for uh, resupply, for cargo. And they look very much the same. We can tell this is a Soyuz because this little label here uh, says Soyuz. And the Soyuz is really three separate parts. Uh, down here at the back, the solar panels are attached to a service module. So power, engines, other parts are here. Um, right here, this is called the descent module. It's actually the ascent and descent module. So this is where the cosmonauts and astronauts are during ascent and descent. And then up at the top here, we have uh, what's called the orbital module or the habitation module. Um, I think I saw the Europeans call it the utility module. So this is additional space. Um, so Soyuz comes up, uh, the descent module makes it back to Earth. These other two burn up in the atmosphere. And we also have some camera stuff here. Not really surprising to have camera stuff in the cupola. This is part of the controls for the robotic arm, the Canada Arm 2 that is attached to the station. Um, and this is one of the manipulators somewhere over here or buried under this. It might even be this uh, is another manipulator that looks like a joystick but I couldn't find it in the pictures. And then all the controls to control the lighting and the cameras uh, so that you can do the arm. Uh, some of the operations are done in the cupola when you can actually see out, uh, when you're working on the side of the station that the cupola is, uh, that can be very useful. The interesting thing about the arm on the station is it actually moves around so that it can get to all the places it needs to. So there are times when you wouldn't use this because you just simply couldn't see the arm. It might be on the back side of the station. And of course, someone else put a mission patch on this. Uh, here's the Destiny module and another US module. Uh, this one I mostly showed because of this curious looking box down here. And if you happen to be a, a cyclist, if you ride bicycles, um, you can see that this part here is a crank arm and this part here is a pedal that a cycling shoe would clip into. And this is actually the exercise bike. Uh, it doesn't really look much like a bike. Um, and it doesn't have a seat and it doesn't have a seat because you don't sit down when you're in orbit. So in use, uh, this whole device is swung out into the middle and attached, and then uh, you just clip into both sides and kind of apparently hang in the air while you pedal. I think this up here is a pad for your head. This is also in Destiny. This is another set of controls for the robotic arm. We see the same sort of control panel here. Uh, that's one of the manipulators, and this is the other manipulator, the more joystick. Um, these pretty much duplicate the set of controls that Shuttle had for the original Canada arm that flew on Shuttle. So uh, anyone who flew on Shuttle would find these very familiar. A uh, little bunch of camera equipment in Destiny. I didn't really do it for the cameras. I did it because in the upper right here, there's this neat little space shuttle module that somebody's just attached to the bulkhead. And I thought that was cool. Uh, moving down, here's the Unity module. This is the U.S. Galley. And uh, 
I really like the Frito-Lay uh, bean dip container there. And you'll notice there are quite a few condiments. We have a hot sauce and mustard and a bunch of other condiments there. And the reason we have a bunch of condiments is one of the effects of space flight is astronauts end up with uh, more fluid in their head than they're used to because gravity doesn't pull it down. So that tends to depress their ability to smell and taste things. So normal food tastes kind of bland. So they like adding seasoning to it to make it taste more normal. Now, these ones over here are kind of interesting. Um, one of the things that would be bad in space would be to have salt and pepper shakers because the salt and pepper would just float in the air and then the astronauts would breathe it in. And that would probably be uh, pretty bad for the astronaut lungs. So for salt, we would just have a, a water solution with salt, uh, salt dissolved in it. For pepper, you just have a uh, bottle with water and pepper floating in it. So you can use that to add salt, pepper, or these other condiments. And you notice there's a set here and there's a set over here in the background. And once again, mission patches here. I like the mission patch behind the laptop, around, all around here. I don't know what determines where you're allowed to put mission patches or not. I assume there's something, uh, some sort of uh, algorithm they use. So that's Unity. And here's a really interesting module. We're back on the Russian side of the station. You can probably tell the Russian modules look very different than the US modules. And I came across this and my first reaction is, what are all of these containers bungeed in place here? Um, and I went off and this led to probably half an hour of research. And uh, these containers are used for a bunch of different things. But some of the smaller ones, like uh, this one here. So we have that. Uh, that means something. This one says brine only, and that tells us something as well. So I went looking. Here's a small one. And it turns out that this is one of the Russian ways of bringing up fresh water. So we have this aluminum container. You uh, unhook the un screw the connectors that hold it together and then you pull it out and there's a plastic bag with water in it. So that's one of the ways that fresh water makes it up to station. Now water is very heavy and people need quite a bit of water and it was determined that uh, you really couldn't afford to bring up enough water for station so station does water recycling. And the way the astronauts usually describe this is they say that uh, today's coffee becomes tomorrow's coffee. And they have a recycling system that takes both water out of the air and that takes water out of the urine from astronauts. And that concentrates the urine and that turns it into what they call brine. And brine will then go into one of these containers and that either ends up in the tanks of one of the cargo supply uh, ships uh, that will burn up in the atmosphere, or it might end up back in one of these containers. And the container might end up just being packed into one of those ships and burn up in the atmosphere. So uh, one of the less elegant things about being an astronaut that they, they don't always tell you about uh, also in Zarya, we have this Russian, uh, I think, hygiene station. So there's a mirror so you can shave and a toothbrush and other things. I thought that was interesting. Uh, down a little farther, we have a emergency breathing uh, apparatus. You can kind of see by the pictograph here and you put it on and this is how you turn it on. These are really important in case of fire. Uh, fires are pretty dangerous on a space station. So uh, there are different versions of these. This is the Russian version. There's a U.S. version, and they're spread throughout the station. And flipping back to the U.S., kind of all the way at the other end, we have the Harmony module, and this is the crew accommodation module. 
So uh, we can see at the bottom, this is one of the crew cabins. Uh, we have one on the left side, one on the right side, and then another one up top, and then a couple work tables. And I really wanted to show this just because I thought the uh, Christmas stocking in here was, was kind of cool. Uh, from Harmony, we get a really nice view back to the other end. So we have the Harmony, the Harmony module here, and then we have next module here. This is where we have the exercise bike. And then down here at the end, we have the Unity. Um, that's just kind of see right there. That's the galley table for food. And then there's storage. And then this has a tunnel that kind of runs up and then connects to the Russian modules, which keep going in the same direction. And more mission patches. Another setup for doing specific tasks. Um, I like this one because it has all of these little tasks things. And then down here at the bottom, it has this really big combination wrench. So uh, you, know, you do lots of fine things, but sometimes you're doing things and you just need your big wrench. So we've kept it right here so it's easy to get to. And then finally, we're going to end up with my favorite module on ISS, and that is the Russian Zvezda module. And the first thing that you notice, or the first thing I notice is, wow, that's a lot of cameras and a lot of lenses. And the question is why? And it's a little hard to see, but down here in the uh, what looks like the floor, we have a window and another window. This one's covered over. So my assumption is that the Russians spend a lot of time doing Earth observation. And uh, to do that, they have these very, very high magnification uh, lenses to get the view that they want. So cameras all over the place, and I thought that's kind of cool. Uh, laptops, laptop, 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 um, all over the place. Here's the Russian equivalent of the galley. You notice the uh, required hot sauce. In this case, it's sriracha. And then behind here, this room, this door with the nice picture of flowers on it is one of the crew accommodations for the Russians. There's one on this side, and then there's one across, uh, across the corridor on the other side. This is the control panel in Zvezda, and you can think of this as a pretty important station control panel. So Zvezda is officially a service module, and it is what is responsible for keeping ISS in orbit. So ISS is in a fairly low orbit, and because of that, uh, the air drag at that, uh, at that altitude causes it to slow down, and it keeps getting lower. So it has to do reboost maneuvers every once in a while, or it would re-enter the atmosphere and burn up. And Zvezda has the engines that are used to reboost, uh, the fuel tanks, and all of that is controlled from this location. And uh, the Russians also are the ones who bring up the propellant. So the Progress uh, cargo flights also bring the propellant that is used by the engines in Zvezda. And you can see a better view down here of that little window I was talking about. Here's a really interesting part of Zvezda. So this is uh, at one end, and we have four pictures. And these are very important pictures in the history of Russian space. All the way on the left, we have Konstantin uh, Tsiolkovsky. And he was uh, not only a Russian father of space flight, he was just a father of space flight. Um, if you've ever heard about the rocket equation, um, Tsiolkovsky was the one who came up with the rocket equation originally. So hugely influential in all space programs. Uh, next to him, we have Sergei Korolev, um, who was really kind of the father of the Russian space program. He was involved in uh, the rocket design and the spacecraft design. Um, next over, uh, Yuri Gagarin, uh, first man in space. And then all the way over on the right, we have a picture of Gagarin and Korolev together. 
So I kind of liked this as a kind of little shrine to the people that were important early uh, in Russian space. Now I'm a cool guy and I really liked the Russian tool, uh, tool arrangement here. So we have a whole bunch of screwdrivers over on the right, just a bunch of miscellaneous tools. Down here we have some wrenches and then over here headlamps, um, all the things you'd use when you need to go repair something, um, you can just come here and get them. And then on the wall behind us, there are some more wrenches, uh, just nicely organized. And then I don't think you can talk about Space Station uh, without talking about toilets at least a little bit. This is the Russian toilet and it looks pretty uh, rudimentary. We have this metal can with a toilet seat on top. And originally I thought that was just the Russian design, but it turns out this is the same design that was used uh, in the US module, uh, at least in the original version. And uh, the new version, of course, uses the, the new NASA toilet, but uh, they used this for a number of years. And the liquid waste goes through this tube to be recycled, and then the solid waste goes into this can. And then finally, it's up to someone has to uh, change the can, and that can ends up uh, on one of the resupplies and burns up in the atmosphere. So uh, some more of the elegance and the fun that you get to do if you're a cosmonaut in this state. Uh, in this state. So that's the set of uh, fun things. Thanks for your attention.